here we have an Acer AL2017 LCD monitor, which is experiencing issues when we power it up. As you can see, each time I press the power button, it tries to turn on and it shuts off after half a second. If you manage to get it to turn on, it will run perfectly fine until the next time you shut it off. This is a typical issue with any LCD and is not the first that I have fixed. To fix this, I'll be tearing the monitor apart and replacing the capacitors on the power inverter board. If you're not comfortable with soldering, you can also order a replacement power inverter for about $40 or $50. If you replace just the capacitors, you will spend as little as $5 to $10 on this repair. In this case, I just ordered a repair kit from eBay for about $20 with shipping. I prefer this method as it can be tedious to pick out the right size and shape of capacitors. When ordering capacitors, I strongly recommend going with a reputable brand such as Rubicon, Panasonic, or Sanyo. Avoid caps on at all costs. Get out your screwdriver, trowel, soldering iron, and a towel. Alright, so I've gone around the edge of this and I've just basically used a screwdriver and this here trowel and I've gone around and just kind of edged up the, uh, the bezel here. And basically every once in a while you're going to hear a snap and it's, first couple is going to be the trickiest and once you get it going it's, it's not too bad. So I've pretty much got this off right now. There's just a couple right down here at the bottom I'm really struggling with. And unfortunately I've kind of mangle this one a bit but sometimes you gotta use a bit of force so at this point I'm noticing there's a screw right here that uh, there's no way I can get at unless I figure out how to get this off here alright so it took me a bit to figure this out but uh, this piece of plastic here snaps off and uh, you've got to do that in order to finish taking this off in order to get the last screw which is right under here so just take a regular screwdriver here, it doesn't matter which type you're going to stick it right in the corner and you're going to pop it up I've kind of got this pre-popped that one was clicked in there pretty good so put that aside alright so you got three screws here another one beside it and you're going to have the same thing on the other side so just go through Pop out each of those. Now we can put this aside, which means we can finally get to this last screw here. And oh, there it is. Alright. Now that I've got this last screw out, I can finally get that last little spot there and the dish just comes right off. Alright, let's uh, turn this around and take a closer look. Uh, you'll notice you've got uh, VGA and the DVI connector on the right here and power connector on the left. Around the outer edge you'll notice a couple of smaller connectors. I've marked these with a, a black and a red sharpie just so I remember uh, which goes where. Now that they're marked, you're going to use your screwdriver and there's a little edge there. I'm just going to try and catch that and pop these out. There we go. 
And try and use the edge when you prime off and not just tugging in the wires because you can pull them right out of the connector and then you've got to solder on a new connector, which isn't very fun. There. Now you're going to go around and you're going to disconnect any screws on this cage here. In order to get this completely off, you're going to have to remove a couple of connectors here. I've already taken off these two. There's two more around the DVI connector. And uh, basically I'm just using a socket here. I just happen to have one in my toolkit that fit. Pop it on. Do some little twisting here. This should come right off. Come on. assembly should come right off. Now that we've got that RF cage off, we want to check all of the capacitors, see if they're swollen, and from there the next thing we'll check is the fuse if there is one. Alright, right away I can see a swollen capacitor here. There's another one there. This one looks okay. That one might be okay. Definitely another swollen one here. This one looks okay. And this one also looks okay. Now, this one here wasn't in the kit I ordered. Uh, usually when I do these, I just order the parts individually, and I will get that just in case. But these big ones are usually worth the most money, and they're typically not the ones that go, i found. So it's the smaller ones. You can save a bit of money. Tear it apart first, get just what you need. Or uh, usually I just replace all the smaller ones because if they haven't gotten yet, there's a good chance they still will. I'm going to remove the whole power inverter board here and the video board here on the left. I'm going to leave that in place because I don't need it. However, you will see they are connected here, so I'll have to be careful when I'm pulling this apart. Alright, it's time to pull out this power inverter board. So we got a screw here, another screw here, and it looks like one more here. Oh, there's one more black screw here I didn't notice. He says too busy looking for shiny things. Alright. Thought it was odd there's only three screws. So this should lift off. Once again, pay attention to this connector. have it.